What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. Today, I have a very special guest. Erica Joy is in the building. How are you doing, Erica? Hey. Doing good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. You know, it's uh, it's actually my, I guess it's my Friday, to, yeah. technically. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, today's my day off, and I have Friday, Saturday off, so it's a good oh, nice. day. It's a great day. <laughs> Always a good day when you got a back-to-back day off. Oh, oh man. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while since I had, like, have you had those, like, when you had split days off? Um, Split days off? Like, back to back or like a day off work day off yeah that day, work day off work yeah. uh, that's like i had those before when i used to work retail oh my and God. it was like it was, you don't want to go to work because you're looking forward to the next day off already and it's just yeah i totally understand it's like having you get two fridays but you get two sundays too and you don't even have mm-hmm. a saturday it's almost, i know it's not the business <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah um so just a quick rundown. Um, I have some intro questions and then a little icebreaker. And then we get into the main meet and then we conclude it with a concluding question. Sound good? Sounds great. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, my first question is, how have you been? It's been a while since I've been able to talk to you and, ca- uh, you know, catch up and kick it with you. How mm-hmm. have you been? Oh, thank you for asking. For um, sure. it's It's been... Uh, well, throughout the year, it's been really hard, pandemic and all. Um, as a person, I like to be around people all the time. I'm like never home. And now like being forced to be at home, it was a switch up, a huge switch up. Um, however, I've been trying to stay busy in a way, um, but at the same time, taking care of my mental health and my physical health um, has been challenging. Oh, absolutely. But um, if it weren't for like exchanges like this, talking to you virtual, virtually and meeting with people virtually, I think I would, I wouldn't even know how I would have been able to handle, but it's been okay and manageable. So yeah. (laughs) Well, definitely. I'm I'm glad to hear at least it's been manageable. Um, Oh yeah. You know, this, this time is unlike any other, you know? And, you know, maybe even before COVID, we'd have those times when we're working through things and trying to manage through things. But yeah, this this is just a whole different challenge. And, you know, Mm -hmm. at least, you know, um, we're all in it together. We're all kind of experiencing it together. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, thank God for Zoom calls and and all that. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Imagine if we were writing letters to each other, like just waiting for the mail to to come back and forth. The anticipation (laughs) and the chance of your mail getting lost. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But for sure. Um, Yeah, I hope you don't mind me asking. uh, How has, like, a year later through COVID, has anything changed for you? Has anything kind of, uh, you know, been different? Or does it still kind of feel the same as it was in the beginning? Um, definitely, I feel like a different person, for sure. Um, you know, it's as sad as it is to say, like, you kind of, like, really see who your, your truest friends are because they, like, check on you during the pandemic. Um, but, you know, like, you learn... You learn to be on your own, even though you're at home with your family or something. But like you learn to be on your own because, you know, like in your like in your room, if you live alone, you spend eight hours by yourself with your thoughts. And like how this is the like this is for me. It's like the time I really take to learn about myself. I self reflect from the whole day. I live with one of my anxieties from the day. And honestly, it's it's helped me grow a lot. Um as, and I feel I feel stronger than I was be- um, before the pandemic, honestly, um, mentally at least, because I learned to really listen to my mind, my body, and yeah, your your body talks to you. So this really takes if you really take the time to listen to it is when you really learn and grow from it. So yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. Um, you know, my body screams at me nowadays <laughs> as, <laughs> as I get old. As I get older, it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh um, yes. <laughs> but, uh, my knees <laughs> <laughs> my knees my back my neck <laughs> oh my goodness yeah oh my yeah goodness. <laughs> well 
I just want to say thank you for um, you know being open and vulnerable and uh, you know and the energy you're bringing to the podcast even in just the first few minutes I can tell that you know um, you know you're seizing this opportunity and I totally appreciate that um, of course for sure um, my second question is what would you what would you like the audience to know about you um, me as a person I am very let's see I'm such a Filipino <laughs> <Just say that. laughs> um, once you enter my home you're my family that's how I like to say it like um, I ask you if you're hungry thirsty um, if you're comfortable if you want to do something I am sure that you never leave hungry <laughs> I hear you. I hear um, you. Yeah, like um, if you ever come to any like, I have cabin trips yearly for my birthday. Um, everyone knows the bombs, at that cabin. The bombs. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> he knows. Everyone knows that I will make sure you're fed and comfortable and happy. I will always check in on you, even though it's my birthday. I always check on everybody else first. So I'm very. I would say I'm a selfless person. So and warm i like to think but yeah <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm a witness to that so for sure for sure uh yeah uh that that's i think you know the audience would be happy to know that for sure uh, Glad to know. <laughs> my third question this is a new one um you know as i go along with the podcast i kind of try to switch things up try to grow you know in in, in mm-hmm. my own way um, the third one is how would you like to be honored? You know, if I was going to honor you on your birthday someday, you know, what would you, how can I be like, all right, this one's for Erica, you know? Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a snap. new one. This is a brand new question. <laughs> no one's. <laughs> um, shoot. Honestly, cause my love language is uh, quality time, friends and family. So I would say, honestly, just, just show up. That's my the, the way to honor me is just to just to be there for me. Um, I have every every year at my birthday I have a toast because you brought up my birthday. I'm gonna bring it up now. Okay. Um, I have a toast, and it was inspired by one of my homies because he said on his birthday and it really like resonated with me. And it's like the people come and go, but the real homies stay. You know, <laughs> and like I totally resonate with that. And that's how I would like to be honored, just just to be there for me. And if you're there, I feel honored. I feel honored that uh, you're there. So, yeah. I got you. I got you. Mm-hmm. No doubt. He's been uh, there, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Is it been three? I think I've... Is it three? I've been a three? Yeah, I think so. Two? Uh, three? I, I think uh, two, three, two, three. Every, oh, no, three, three. Yeah. yeah oh, three. Every single one. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, Wolfgang, for sure. <laughs> Thanks for being there, homie. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so my fourth question for you is, what would you like your descendants to know about you? I don't know if you heard me frame this before with uh, other episodes, but basically, uh, for me, it's you know when I'm trying to when I'm trying to figure out who I am, and I think about my ancestors. I, I wonder yeah. what they were like. And uh, yeah, if you had a descendant that was kind of going through the same kind of thing and they were like, yo, I wonder what, you know, my great, great, great grandmother, great, great, great aunt Erica was like, what would you Mm. want them to know about you? I would want them to know that, um, you know, regardless of my face, (laughs) (laughs) uh, I would want them to know just to be kind to anyone um you never know anyone's story um just be kind and just want them to know that yeah besides my face i'm kind to people um even regardless even if they do me wrong you know like the grudge is just not worth not worth it um it's okay to be mad for a little bit you know but don't hold on to it because man it'll just age you it'll just age you and just be kind to people and life's just so much happier that way so for sure and why why are you saying beside your face though (laughs) no you know what (laughs) because a lot of people think i have like an rbf oh i got you i got you (laughs) yeah yeah 
<laughs> I don't think so. I don't think oh, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten that plenty of times. Like, oh, I was scared when I first met you. I was like, why? Like, I don't know. I thought you were like mean or something. <laughs> <That's not wrong. laughs> I mean, I, I don't feel like I have it either, but there's definitely been times when people have asked me what my problem was. So I don't, okay. even, I don't even know. Like, damn, that's, that's just on my face. That's written on my face. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what makes me feel like, man, I should smile more or something. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. My fifth question is mm-hmm. how well do you know yourself? And you could put it in a scale from one to ten if it's hard to put it to words. How well do I know myself? Honestly, um, I feel like on a scale of one to ten, I could do both. I think on a scale of one to ten, I think I know myself probably like eight out of ten in a way. Sure. Um, but I think the person who knows me best is my boyfriend. <laughs> I think he knows me best. Oh, honestly, I think maybe like nine out of ten. <laughs> sometimes I have to correct him, but um, yeah, I'm I'm still learning, you know. But we learning every day by ourselves. But yeah, I would say maybe eight out of ten for now. For now. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I put myself at a five, and I don't think that's changed as much. Um, I don't know. Like for for me, I, on my best days, I feel like I know myself more than I do on my worst days. You know, mm. it's, a, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's the ebbs and flows for sure. Uh, That's true. But yeah, yeah. All right. So we made it to the spelling bee icebreaker portion. Um, <gasps> I don't know if you'd like to participate or not. Uh, feel free to say no, but it's just an opportunity. Um, if you get it right, you'll be invited back for my spelling bee episode later down the line with other guests who have gotten oh, it right. Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, would you like to participate? Oh, heck yeah. Awesome. I'm down. Awesome. <laughs> um, have you uh, have you seen previous episodes with the word liaison yet? I have not. Awesome. Okay. That's the word. The word is liaison. Um, and you got two chances. And I'll, I got a hint for you if you need one. So okay. go for it. You could write it in the air. You could write it down. Just don't look it up. Liaison. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use it in a sentence, please? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. I, I mean, I could. I could. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I think, I think I, I think I got it. Uh, okay. Liaison. L, I, A, S, O, N. Liaison. Close. You, you, Dang. <laughs> here comes a hint. Here comes a hint. It's hard to hear it when you say it. Uh, I'll tell you that. But it's right in the middle of those letters that you just gave me snap (laughs) yeah right right smack in the middle of those words that you the letters that you gave me um yeah is don't and don't worry no one's gotten this right yet (laughs) (laughs) at all so don't feel bad it is Maybe French. A, Sorry, go I ahead. Know, I'm not like, <laughs> liaison. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So it's right dab in the middle and it's hard to hear. Liaison. Liaison. Okay, maybe it's liaison. Okay. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. L I A. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pulling for you. <laughs> Z S O N. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Dang. It, it's a uh, L I A I S O N. There's yeah. There's a freaking I in the middle. There's and, another I in there. Right, right. What the heck? <laughs> Come on, spelling. <laughs> Yo, I blame spell check. You know, we, 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 no, we no longer have to know how to spell. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now I'm gonna be like thinking about it. I'm never gonna get that wrong again. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm gonna tell my friends like, did you know there's an I in the middle of liaison? Yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't know. I didn't know until I looked it up, and you know, nobody, nobody is. But it's funny. I asked my cousin, who's actually so my cousin. Um, it was her and her husband that came on. She's a li- liaison, <laughs> like that's her job. And um, what's it called? I, she got pissed at me because I gave her a different word, and I gave her husband liaison, and she was all like, <laughs> but she's the only one I think who would have gotten it right. <laughs> oh my gosh, so close, so close. Yeah, thank you for participating, though. I, ho- I hope that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all righty we made it to the main meat part of the interview um so throw me a number between one and 34 all right let's go with number five all right what is one thing on your bucket list oh shoot one thing on my bucket list mm. this one you know i know bucket list can be long so um, you know, it's like well, one of those things for bucket lists. Like you don't even know you have a bucket list until you think about the bucket list. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, bucket list. Let's see. Hmm. For sure. Okay, I always think about this, and I always say this. I want to go to Australia. That's definitely on my bucket list. So. What, what, yeah, why Australia? Um, you know, it's like a country, you know, I never thought of myself going to for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I really want to hold a koala. <laughs> <laughs> Are they nice? I, I heard they, yeah. they, they're not so nice, like, as far I as... Heard, I, I don't know, like, I saw, like, a, a documentary. I'm not even a documentary. I think I was watching John and Kate Plus 8. Okay, <laughs> okay. Was, hey, that's, that's a documentary. <laughs> And then it was like hugging her, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, I want to be hugged by a koala. That looks amazing." So, okay, but okay. um, yeah, I also just like, I want to see how different it is there. You know, I don't know, just a, w- a different culture shock, I guess. No, so. I, d- I mean, I can list out the reasons why I want to go to Australia. Um, mm. I just think you know you've seen those landscapes, right? Um, oh yeah, how it looks like off the ocean and everything it looks freaking mm-hmm. crazy. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely want to. I like the accent. Not gonna lie, I'll, I, I would go there and just be entertained by everybody just talking. I'm Absolutely. like, <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah. I'm like just sitting there, like listening to conversations, just because it's like, oh damn, it's like, it's kind of like listening um, or like reading subtitles in a different language, but it's for oh, your yeah. for your ear, right? It's like an accent. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you know, I want to kind of know like the uh, what, Australian barbecue uh yeah on the barbie you know, they don't they say that <laughs> but yeah like yeah the, Australia seems like a cool place to go um I, I'm with you on that for sure <laughs> absolutely I mean you just name more things for me to want to try to yeah. go to Australia someday <laughs> um yeah and uh what's with that yeah the thing about koalas for some reason I maybe I watched some kind of documentary or um I th- specifically i remember in the simpsons they they mm-hmm. went to australia and like they can they had this running gag of like koalas like just coming out of nowhere and like latching onto somebody's face and so i'm all like you know in, in my mind i'm like that must be some there must be some truth to that if they're making a joke and about I- it and, like, <laughs> like what does that mean are they really gonna attack my face <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's that's just the Simpsons. Um, mm-hmm. But for sure, for sure. Uh, throw me another number. Let's do 27. 27. But the, the, the. All right. Who is a stranger or passerby in your life that has left the best impression? Like, like you don't even know them anymore. But in mm-hmm. that moment or that instance, you're like, oh, shit, that was a crazy like interaction with a total stranger you know yeah. oh snap yeah yeah um, is when you gotta kind of like go through your memory banks and <laughs> oh my goodness passerby oh okay i think i got one oh, that was quick okay um there was a time um it was me and my boyfriend if y'all don't know who my boyfriend is. It was it was Desi in that last few episodes. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that now. That, but, um, it's not a mis- don't, don't make it a mystery. <laughs> but shout out Desi. <laughs> no. Um. So Desi and I, we were um 
we were in the car uh, driving to a mall in Modesto and uh, me and him were like singing and holding hands in the car you know we're just being our goofy selves and then um, I don't know just being weird and goofy and yeah and then this lady you know she pulls up it brought the stoplight she pulls up to the stoplight and then she rolls it down and uh she caught our eye because you know like maybe she was rolling down her window but she caught her eye and she was looking at us she was just like waving she's like hey and then she rolled down the window and she's like and then we rolled down the window and she was like you guys are the cutest couple i've ever seen like you guys keep being in love blah blah, blah. and i was just like that is like wow what, what a word of kindness you know like um that lady she just went out of her way to share her endearment towards me and Darcy and I was just like I mean that's a story that, that kind of resonated with me I never met her you know never saw her again like I mean, that was that was it it was just something that me and Desi can share now and that just shows that you know just be yourself you know and and just radiate happiness just from being yourself so with your, yeah. with your SO but yeah that's that's a dope ass story I'll tell you that that's crazy <laughs> yeah like, I didn't even think about I don't think about it often but when I do think about it it's like um that happened so yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> were you, you said you guys were singing a song in the car or? uh yeah we were just like it was a song I don't remember what song it was it was okay. just playing and then, yeah you were gonna ask <laughs> yeah I was gonna ask I was, I was wondering <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was probably some groove song because at the time we were listening to a lot of our, you know, the classic 80s music. Nice. Like nice. disco music and stuff. So honestly, it could have been September, Earth, Wind, Fire, for all I know. <laughs> hey, that's, that's hard not to, that's to get jam, punky. No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a jam year round, not even in September. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Hey, that, it's classic. It's classic. It's such a feel good, mm-hmm. feel good song. I, I, don't, I don't know how anybody can't can't just get the good feels here in the do, 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 mm-hmm. do, do, do. the moment you hear it you're just like oh shit i gotta get out of my yeah. chair yeah. <laughs> yeah i gotta stand up for this one <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. like we play it cooking and you just can't not dance while you're cooking you know oh yeah like any moment, it's any moment type of type of song so Damn, I never thought of like, I don't cook, so I, I don't know what it takes, but, or I never thought of like, I should make like a cooking mood music, you know, uh, Dude. playlist or something like yes. that. Yeah. Oh, yes. I got you. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't have to cook, you know, you could just be there watching the person cook or, you know, just, yeah. or play the music and then enjoy a good ass meal. Yeah. It's like it le- elevates the flavor. <laughs> yo, yo, I mean, I mean, we could talk about that too, as far as like how we can tune our senses to just enhance mm-hmm. our experiences, right? Like mm-hmm. people say, if you can smell the food, it tastes better, right? Or mm-hmm. vice versa. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, <laughs> I, I I'm just a, a lazy person, so I, I don't really cook that often. But <laughs> it's not that I I, 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 I kick myself in the butt for not not doing it more. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, shout out to the random lady across the way at the red <laughs> at the stoplight. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. For sure. Uh, throw me another number. Oh my god, I was thinking about the number forty-two, but I was like, wait. <laughs> you can flip that around. Twenty-four. Did I say? Tw- I said twenty-four already. What did I say? Uh, you said. Ooh, I, damn, I feel bad. Can't remember. <laughs> We're just going with the flow of the conversation right now. It's good. It's good. I'm trying to think. What was it? Let's say 27 or 24. Oh yeah, it was 27. It was 27. Okay, let's yeah. 24 then. All right, 24. Um, how much of yourself is due to nature versus nurture? Genetics versus influence. Oh shit. Hmm. How much of myself? Um. <laughs> I would say maybe um, 75% of myself is my influence. Mm. 25% is 
genetics. 25% mean like for me it's just like how I like how I'm built. You know? 75% mm -hmm. is what I learned growing up, I would say. So um I say that because I don't know, like I I hate to say comparing, but comparing myself, you know, to like people I've met, you know, along the way. I feel like um I grew up differently uh, amongst my age like when I wasn't comparing to, not comparing to my my peers now but like before like in high school like I feel like I had to grow up quicker um not just because of the environment at home but more so like the people I put myself around you know um I learned at a young age put myself around um people that I want to be around so that was either my family and my family influenced me you know yeah. my church they influenced me a lot um and then um uh just my non-toxic friend groups growing up <laughs> i liked i because like i went you know everyone goes through some weird stuff in high school and all that but like it didn't but for me i guess I learned early on just to put myself around people that you know wouldn't harm me would be better for me would benefit me in the future kind of thing yeah uh, yeah but albeit not i don't talk to everyone anymore but i do i do know that i am influenced by these people growing up because um i feel like i can you know throw in some wisdom because like um i feel like um people come to me a lot about for advice um whether it be like life relationship self and i don't know i feel like i don't know a lot of people who can do that for me kind of thing so Same. yeah i feel like my inf the influences i've learned um set me up to be that kind of person for everybody else that I'm, I'm the person that i want that i hope to find that makes sense it does i it does. be that person that i want to be friends with kind of thing so i am influenced by all those people to be an everybody type of person so i got you i got yeah. you um i hope you don't put too much pressure on yourself you know, oh yeah to, yeah, to yeah that that's, uh, you gotta take those um self-care days and just like unplug take some time yourself watch that movie get your nails done get your lashes done, you know do do get, what makes you happy get your lashes done right <laughs> <laughs> wink wink <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah yeah um oh we could we could plug that in at the end don't worry uh but yeah <laughs> so uh i heard you mention you know like your family your church the people that you spend time with growing up um is there anything you know is is there a specific any specific personality trait that maybe came out of you know with you know when you're from your church community if you don't mind me oh. asking mm -hmm. you know? um for my church specifically yeah we, we go church and then i'll ask one about family just those two oh, okay, okay. Yeah. from church um i definitely learned um to be a part of a community um so just be welcoming um that's what i definitely learned from being a part of a church and then i know um that some people are not fortunate to be able to say that um but with that being said like that made me even more committed to being a more welcoming person um because you know a church shouldn't turn around turn away anyone um you're there for one reason and that reason only and um i feel like the church definitely taught me to be kind to one another so yeah i think <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what i learned from being part of the church yeah no for sure you know mm -hmm. um i don't know if i told you maybe you already know but i went to catholic school from k through eight <laughs> and even afterwards my parents were big church goers um mm -hmm. i felt the community a lot more i would say k through eight mm -hmm. and even through high school uh you know going to church i would always be sitting in the pews and whatnot and i could see you know the youth groups you know do their thing and kind of like 
um, I was never a part of it, but I remember thinking like, damn, it'd be fun to be a part of that. <laughs> um, for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that just, you know, you talk about community in the church and that's what the memories that kind of popped up in my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, did you ever do choir? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I, so that's, that's the people I grew up around is uh, for the, for the church. Um, my family is an av- very, um, active participant with the choir for our church. That's actually how I met Desi. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, for the church, I, I play the piano for the church. I mean, I don't do it anymore, but I, yeah, I offered my violin skills. I play violin and then I play ch- piano and then I sometimes sing alto for the church. So yeah. I got you. I got mm-hmm. you. Um, mm-hmm. do you still sometimes join in or like, <laughs> I know for me, if it's a song that I really like, uh, I, like um here i am lord is probably one of my oh my gosh ones. i love that yeah. song <laughs> yeah 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 that's probably my jam in church for sure but uh mm-hmm. yeah i can't help but sing it that's what the, one thing i like about church too is that like when everybody's singing in unison it's like oh, going yeah. to a concert you know and mm-hmm. everybody just knows the words definitely a cool feeling um, it is uh, do you ever altar serve i know i did but oh yes i did <laughs> But you have to do it. You have to do it. You know, you got to get yeah. the community service hours. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny. I, I feel like such a, like, badass being an altar server. Really? Like, I don't know why. It was like one of those things. It's like, I can do these things and you can't. You have to sit on the pews and not do anything. I don't know why. It was just like one of those, like, you if you're an altar server, you're like, it's like the basketball team of the church. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's like, like a, yeah. <laughs> we got uh-huh. the we got the Google badge for for the church. You know, you gotta do everything. <laughs> um, yeah, all all access. You know, <laughs> yeah. you need me to talk exactly. to the talk to the father. No, hey father, come come over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. You get a whole new experience being a part of the altar server team <laughs> yeah yeah you know my, my best I'm, i would say my favorite part there's two um one was getting out of class or coming to class late because we would do morning masses uh at, mm-hmm. at school and then the second best part was if you ever got chosen to work uh, a wedding you get paid oh, you get paid you mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. but yeah but yeah <laughs> For sure. so um is there a personality trait of yours that came from your family oh yeah okay <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i'm loud because of my family <laughs> um you know it's just like unapologetically loud and like um laugh like i laugh at really hard at things and i should probably notice already but um <laughs> i'm with you i'm with you there <laughs> yeah like um for sure, I yeah I learned to be un, unapologetically, unapologetically loud, enthusiastic, um, welcoming. Um, um, yeah, that's and for forgiving and a lot of I learned a lot from my family for sure. and a lot of them are around me too. So, um, but a lot of them. But some of like a lot of, I learned a lot. Um, being like I'm like in the middle because I for my cousins at least so like we have like um, the older ones and the younger ones yeah um, I'll be at the younger ones are like 20 something now so whatever but like they were oh, still younger you know but I was definitely in the middle <laughs> I know um, so like I don't even know where I was going with that to be honest no you were saying like you're kind of in the middle so I don't know. I was thinking that you, maybe you were saying you you get influenced and you influence the the others as oh, well. Oh yeah, 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 yes, yeah. yes. See, exactly. thank you. Yeah. So I learned a lot from my elder cousins and then brought it down to the younger ones. You know, um, but for definitely sure, I learned to just like support. I learned to be really supportive um, within my family. So um, you know, because uh, we all we all live not too far apart, but like for at least an hour. In different directions. Our to Sacramento, our towards Vallejo area, and I'm in the middle. 
and oh, I see. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we come out, show out, support. You know, yeah. So it, all of this kind of relates to all my previous answers in the beginning of the uh, podcast. So like, is like, I get a lot of my um, influences from my family now that I really think about it. So oh, no doubt, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're close to your family, you know. Oh yeah. Of course. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Uh, I need to count it out for myself as well. But between mm-hmm. you and your cousins and maybe their kids, like how, how what's the that, what's that number if you're gonna guess? Like, is it plus thirty plus, forty plus? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, plus, like how many people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just with your your generations of cousins. And oh, then, just my generation. Oh, and then, and then their kids. Oh. You know, or yeah. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so each parent in my fam, in my this is my just my mom's side. I feel you. I feel you. I don't talk to my dad's side a lot, but just you. my mom's side, each of them at least had two. Okay. So each each sibling at least had two per parent. So <laughs> so there's at least okay, starting with eight, and then um my my parents' cousins have kids you know so that's like another what eight so 16 and then oh shit okay <laughs> yeah and then and then one of them one of my cousins had kids so plus two so 18 and then i, I have more cousins in the philippines who did her moving who moved here so that's like another it's like 19 i think right 19 okay now. i think you got me beat <laughs> Yeah, I honestly thought that was kind of small. <laughs> really? I mean, you know, I'm sure I'm going to get some people to be like, yo, no, my family's bigger and all that stuff, which is a mm-hmm. curious thing to talk, talk about for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in, in a lot of cultures, you know, it, I, it feels like only America where, you know, a, a lot of my American friends aren't close with their cousins or they're not mm-hmm. even, you know, but the rest of the world, you know, we, we know the value of our extended families. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Let's jump into the next number. Go for it. Oh shit! Oh shit! Okay, I wasn't thinking about it. <laughs> oh, well, back, 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 back. you got. If you got more to add, go for it. I don't know. Um. Okay, let's do number eleven. Eleven. The what? What change would you like to see in the world? Oh. <laughs> Especially now, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, plain and simple. I just I'm so tired of like hate right now, you know. Um. So, just plain and simply, just I just hope for the world, you know, that we all find peace and unity, you know, and understanding and accepting. Um, it's just it's just so bizarre to me how hard it is for people to really accept change you know yeah and it's like it's it's not hard I mean it, it takes work not gonna lie but you know it takes work to relearn unlearn things but if you do the effort you know we can get there we can definitely get there and I do believe we could um, as long as we keep you know, educating others and um, being optimistic but realistic at the same time. Um, but just uh, just starts with being kind to each other, dude. This is so scary what our world is right now. Um, my dad even messaged me like earlier today. He was just like, he heard about another hate crime against Asians, and he was like, um, if I if I hear about another one of these. We're we're gonna leave the country, you know. Wow. wow. Like, dad, like, it could be worse in other countries, you know. And um, yeah, if you don't stand up to it now, like, it's never gonna change. It's never gonna change. And like, I understand why he lives in fear, you know. Like, he he worked hard to move here to the states, to the land of the free, you know. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like the land of the free is he. I feel like he feels like the land of the free is like 
turning him away right now and I feel like um I feel terrible you know I just I don't know what I can do to help my dad but just to keep fighting the good fight you know um, uniting with others and continuing to be kind to others so yeah damn yeah, right. I got deep again. <laughs> yeah, this this is what the whole conversation is all about so mm-hmm. yeah um yeah for me um this, everything that's going on with the the Asian hate and stuff uh yeah. I'm just the, every, the more I hear the mm-hmm. more I get concerned for my folks you know absolutely yeah and you know cause they're you know they're they're up in age and I'm not saying there's all these people getting attacked which is still fucked up mm-hmm. but um yeah like there's still old older Asians and mm-hmm. if this could happen to anybody at any time anywhere yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's very like you know unnerving I'm just like I, I don't know what I would do honestly like I could just lose it and um you know do something that's out of myself but because I'm so enraged because you know I think um <laughs> you know me I'm, I'm I I tend to be more on the nice side of things oh yeah maybe even to a fault sometimes Mm -hmm. so maybe for me i just go to those extremes and there's never really been something to push me to the other side of that extreme but if Mm -hmm. there was i yeah that that's that's where like this is the more i hear about it and if anything like yeah i mean if it was my folks (laughs) i don't know what i do but uh, i know yeah yeah but yeah we always think about what's how are we how are we gonna be if that ever happened to me you know yeah yeah you know, it's like you always think like oh, i would i would beat that guy's ass you know like but like sometimes like the adrenaline of fear just takes over and just frees up you know and then sometimes you may black out and you don't know what happens <laughs> or you'll just um try to get away and just it's it's sad to even think that we have to think like that yeah you know yeah. and uh, then yeah just just sad yeah I mean Mm -hmm. um, you know this is no disrespect to all the other folks getting uh, affected by the events that are happening it's just Mm -hmm. more so you know I'm sure people can understand like it's it it is different when it's it's not in your vicinity you know I'm Mm -hmm. sure if I saw a random person outside right now getting fucked up I'd go out there and try to do something Mm-hmm. anybody out there um you know promoting hate that's one thing that confuses me like a motherfucker is mm-hmm. how how can we not understand in this day and age that that just isn't the right thing to do you know like know. it's a it's a trip to me i'm just like damn people, it, it, like, it, you know, it's, just like, it's so weird like like as the recent as the recent cases like why elder people yeah i'm just like just oh. why like <laughs> what did they do to you they like the cases that we've seen i'm so sorry if this is tricking to anybody who's listening but it's just like yeah um the, they're just walking doing the minding their own business working doing their own thing like what what is triggering triggering for these people to attack them uh, it just breaks my heart breaks my heart and I feel for everybody who's been affected by it and um I am like I am sorry if you're you are affected by it and just know that it's not going to go unheard so yeah yeah um yeah we could talk about we could have a whole like you know special episode on on this for sure Mm -hmm. um yeah. Uh, oh, I was gonna say shout out to that lady who whooped that dude's ass. So. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah that, that dude was like, she was right? What's up? She was from San Francisco, right? I believe right? so. I believe yeah. so. I wish, I wish I knew what she was saying. Like, if someone could translate what she was yelling. Oh yeah. I, like, I want it. Like, I whoop, I whooped his ass. I whooped his ass. You know, like that. That been funny to me, but. <laughs> I whooped his ass, you know. Yeah, yeah, oh my yeah. God. Don't or like, don't fuck with me. You're the wrong person to fuck with, you know. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anybody out there knows the what she was saying, I would. I, I'm kind of curious, but please, yeah. please let us know. Oh hope, my god. I hope it was something positive like that, and not you know something more negative. But uh, yes. yeah, th- <laughs> that dude looked fucked up though. He was on the stretcher, like you know, pointing at her, like, dude, like. 
<laughs> Why are you pointing at her? You know what you were doing. Like, <laughs> you did what you did, and she did what she had to do. Yeah, and yeah. That, that was the result, man. I'm so sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not not sorry at all. Not as not sorry at all. <laughs> Um, I never even got to see the video of the actual like her fight. I just saw the aftermath. I guess the dude is already yeah. in the stretcher, but you know, but she did it with one eye open. You feel me? So mm -hmm. it's fucking crazy. It is yeah. so crazy. All right, you can uh, throw me another number. Oh, oh snap! Okay, okay. Um, no. What's what's the thirty fourth question? Let's do thirty four. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right it's um what do you look for in the leader hmm okay what do i look for in a leader yeah. hmm. um in a leader i would appreciate when they can admit a mistake um i appreciate when a leader um grows from that mistake learns from it uh educates himself and asks um the people that they're leading what they can do to improve um i appreciate a leader who gets to know their team um gets to know who who they're leading you know can't just lead blindly like that and um it's important to me that a leader um it's important to me that a leader is organized too <laughs> because it, i don't know something about leaders who aren't organized just, it bothers me i got you, you. know like um, it's just a part of my my way of thinking it's like i need to sort things out and if it's not sorted out i don't even know how we're gonna get through the day um but but i also appreciate a leader who could figure it out also like if things are not going the way things are supposed to be going um they figure it out for the team so i do i do believe that mm. is what i find a leader but i'm sure there's more <laughs> you should write those out for sure i Just, should i mean yeah because yeah, like there's always times where you're like you're in a work environment and then you're you have a boss and you kind of like list out the things you don't like about your boss, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hardly really don't think about what you like about them. You think about what you don't like. So every time I leave a job or get a new job, you know, that's what I always think about. Like, do I like my boss? Are they a good leader to me? You yeah. know, it kind of goes, it goes everywhere for me. Like, even I'm a dancer, if y'all didn't know. I'm on a dance team too. And that's how I, you know, I, that's what I look for in a leader my, as a, for my directors as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, I feel like as long as the, the leader can benefit me and my team, um, they're a good leader to me. But yeah, just, just as long as they're not selfish and as long as that they're understanding and communic can communicate with their team, you know, no one likes a boss that doesn't want to talk to their team, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah. But definitely a boss that doesn't tell, or a, a leader who doesn't tell you what to do, but they tell you how you can do it, to, how you can get there together. So, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I, 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 um, I have mad respect for the leaders who, yeah, don't tell me what to do, but show me how to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of like, um, I've jumped around a lot of jobs, you know, past 10 yeah. years or so. And I think <laughs> now that I, I, I like, um, have this question I think that's definitely going to be a question in like any next interview I have like what's the mm -hmm. leadership style here you know mm -hmm. it's curious to, to hear what they say because yeah, yeah that's totally important with like um, in regards to work experience and me just thinking about all the places I've been to mm -hmm. the, the jobs I've appreciated the most were the, the ones I felt like had the best leaders or you know mm -hmm. um, and they had all the qualities you had mentioned for sure uh, and yeah i think that's rare too you know sometimes people are put into leadership roles not because they're good leaders but because you know maybe it's the time they put in which i understand you know seniority mm -hmm. like you put your put your time in you deserve a shot yeah but, but once you can kind of see that 
it's not working now somebody should say something and not just keep oh, the person absolutely right absolutely uh-huh i can totally agree with that statement <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no doubt and mm-hmm. like you know i believe everybody can be a leader um yeah. but maybe it's not it depends on the timing and what what the role is you know mm-hmm. uh, and some people are born leaders some people can just easily do what they need to do in regards to meet, meeting those qualities and yeah. there's a lot of people who need to learn it um mm-hmm. so even being let go from a leadership position or whatever could be a learning experience and mm-hmm. for that person to be like okay next time now i know what i did wrong and yes not a lot of people got that experience yeah. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> no doubt no doubt totally agree yeah at least because got they gotta um they gotta educate you and how to become a leader uh, in a way like you got like if it were me you know like i want to train my team to take over me one day you know yeah. and, i mean you know like that's i feel like letting them like drive the car drive the boat whatever steer the wheel like let them steer and then eventually you guys will all meet at the same level so for sure yeah. for sure mm-hmm. um we got about uh about 10 minutes left in the podcast so uh let's okay. see if we can get a couple more numbers and then for we'll sure. go from there let's do uh, it uh, let's do number what's the first question i asked for the last what's what's the first one okay okay um what is uh let me see what are your top three personal values Top three first, top three personal values. Okay. Uh, top three personal values. Family. That was like a given. Family is very important to me. Um. Let's see. Um. Protecting and loving myself is uh, my second personal value, you know. And then my third. My third one. Um, I guess my second one ties kind of ties. My yeah, second yeah. one kind of ties in with my third one. So protecting myself and loving myself so that I can third radiate that good energy to others so my third one so promoting positivity my third one so family is my first personal value second is protecting myself and loving myself and third is radiating that good energy out to others and promoting positivity yeah um i'll I'll ask you about that third one um Mm -hmm. what's the what's that importance of uh or to radiate that energy or for you uh radiating that good energy to others yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm a big believer in like whatever you put out in the world um you'll receive back you know um like i, I do believe that you know good things come to those who weigh and it's so cliche to say but like i think no, it's, it's true yeah, yeah yeah like i think it's so true you know um uh like no one wants to like work with anybody who who's just like an asshole all the time you know <laughs> um, i just rather like like everybody like if i were to come across somebody and then they're just having the shittiest day right yeah. and i were to come across him and then i wasn't in a i wasn't promoting that good energy you know giving them that good love whatever like and I was at just one plus one plus one more person that just didn't give them the energy they really needed. Like I, you know, like I just couldn't live with myself if I were to push that person over the edge. So I like make it like my my like that's that's why it's like one of my biggest values. It's like I just rather rather like be kind to people. Um, like I, I say it all the time you know just be kind you deserve to smile and give off that energy because you want to reciprocate that and then so you can receive it too put your put yourself around good people and and it's just so much 
we need that right now especially but um i just think it's just so much life's so much better that way and i mean i'm not naive you know there's yeah. there's some bad days <laughs> yeah yeah no, there are. Yeah. but um yeah i just i would rather just be happy rather be smiling i yeah. feel you i feel you no doubt yeah thank you for sharing um, yes yes uh just want to thank you again for your time and definitely the the, uh, the energy you brought to the podcast the quality of your answers is dope as dope as hell so thank you um would, would you like to give any shout outs how can people find about find out about what you're doing you know <laughs> go for it um first of all thank you three four for having me on your podcast uh, this is my first podcast so this is a really i've had a really good time awesome. um but yeah, y'all can find me on Instagram at Erica E R I K A underscore Joy J Zero Y, or for all your lash and brow lamination needs, you can follow my beauty page at Vision of Joy at Vision of Joy um, B I S I O N O F J Zero Y all on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, folks. If you didn't catch that, it'll be in the dis- uh, in the no- episode notes and the description. <laughs> yeah, point, point, point down. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't got, I haven't started doing that yet. <laughs> but um, for sure, for sure. Uh, so we've come to our concluding question. Uh, Let's and, do it. And it is: What is the greatest lesson you've learned thus far in life? <laughs> I guess that kind of like ties into everything I've been saying throughout the whole thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, greatest lesson: um, be patient with yourself, and um, be kind to others, and uh, treat people like the way you want to be treated. Um, but yeah, most of all, just take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. So that's like the greatest lesson i ever learned <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Mm-hmm. the patience with yourself is something that i definitely struggle with uh oh yes and yeah, oh, yes. yeah i've been learning about that too over the quarantine just being patient so. what do you think it is what, what do you think it is about us that um you know we just can't seem to i don't know um is it because we see other people doing things maybe um absolutely Maybe, yeah. yeah maybe it just looks easy you know from, from mm-hmm. afar and you're like i can do it and then when you do it it's like why am i not doing it you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no yeah. yeah yeah like uh, uh my 10 year high school reunion is this year oh snap <laughs> yeah okay. and then i was just like damn son like what am i doing with my life you know and then you know like yeah. I'm, I'm already on the path to getting a a college degree right and then um like you know being patient with yourself uh you know i took some time off of school and doing things i really want to do and then now that i'm back in school um and on my my way to get my diploma but like i'm in this i'm my 10-year reunion is around the corner and i'm just like fuck like what am i what am i gonna like say to them you know like what do i do you know yeah (laughs) and then maybe Attic. it's like oh my god what am i gonna say am, am i impressive enough you know like yeah don't even worry about it like you just impress yourself because mm-hmm. um like you gotta think about the same amount of years has happened you know like it happened already just just go do what you need to do and just do it in your own time because everyone's timeline is different yeah. and yeah. um yeah just that's when i learned like okay just relax remind yourself like this this is your path for a reason you are the way you are because you took the path you took so be grateful for it and then um just just do what you got to do from there so no for sure Mm -hmm. Um, at least you're aware of it and you know (laughs) I, i i just think that like you know no one's as as happy as they seem all the time and mm-hmm. when it comes to the reunions like that and i think this is why like what kind of inspired the podcast too is that we have so much small talk and mm-hmm. sometimes it, it, it can get, get competitive about like 
you know uh how how someone how well we're all doing right? oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's, that's where the, the conversation kind of stops you know mm-hmm. and i just didn't really like that and i was like you know there's there's more stuff going on and let's talk about it but yeah it's hard it's hard to be open so on that note i just want to thank you again um for being open and of course. um yeah much love and uh 